In this lesson, we're going to build an AWS Lambda website. Let's talk a little bit about AWS Lambda. In a nutshell, it's a Python function. It could be another function in uh, another language, but in this case, we're going to do Python. And this Python function is hooked up to a trigger. And it could be any trigger that you could hook up to, to build something out. In this case, we're going to build a trigger around the web. So we're going to hook up an HTTP trigger to it. So what this means is that uh, if I click on a URL, it'll map down to this function and it'll actually call it. Uh, and that's all it is when you're building a AWS Lambda function. And later, if I wanted to hook this up into other kinds of events, uh, maybe I could hook up into maybe an S3 uh, file that's that's uh, event that's a file is placed on S3. Or if I wanted to listen to uh, SQS, which is a queue, I could hook that up. But in general, it's just a piece of logic. I hook it up to an event and then I can serve out a website. So let's go ahead and build this. Once again, with AWS Cloud9, what we can do is build out a solution inside of this Cloud9 environment for Lambda. To do that, I'm going to select this tab, AWS Resources. And from here, I'm going to move this over a little bit. And there's an icon for create a new Lambda function. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And if you notice, it says uh, build out a function name and an application name. So I'll go through here and just say, uh, hello, cloud, uh, lambda. And uh, it'll automatically fill out the application name. And then it'll ask me for a runtime. So Lambda does support multiple runtimes and Cloud9 supports both Node and Python. I'm gonna select Python 3.6 and then I'll go ahead and say an empty Python function. Next up, here's where the trigger comes in. I am going to build a website, so I will take this trigger, which is API Gateway, and select it. And it's going to ask me, where is the location I want to map this to? So what is the URL path? Uh, to start with, I will go ahead and say the slash path, so the root path. And then for security, I'm going to say none. I just want to serve out a, a very basic web request. Okay. Uh, and then from here, I don't need to do any special privileges. It's just going to serve out HTML, and I can go ahead and say uh, finish. Great. Now that I've got that set up, uh, it'll build out a scaffolding for me inside of here. So you see that it, it goes through and it creates this whole uh, structure for this project, including uh, a file here, a virtual environment, and some other things. Well, all I need to change is this Lambda function itself as a handler. Uh, uh, in fact, in this case, we're not going to even uh, capture the event. We're just going to build out something that returns back raw HTML. So anytime you get a scaffolding like this, you can, you can go through and put your logic inside of here. So I'm going to just paste some code I have uh, prepared earlier. And notice that I say content is a variable, and I put some HTML in there. So I put an HTML uh, tag, and I say, um, you know, here's my... Uh, hello website lambda paragraph and then notice I return a response here and the response in the body is this content so this HTML it returns back a status code of 200 this means that uh, a web service is successfully retrieving a code and then for the headers I say look to the web browser I say I'm gonna give you HTML that's it so once I do this I also could build out a, a, a website the difference between this and a static one is that it's called every single time someone makes a request so now that we've got this set up I'm going to run it locally to do that I'll go over to this hello cloud lambda directory and right click on it and say run run API gateway local what this will do is it will allow me to test it out in this local environment. So this is one of the key advantages of AWS Cloud9. Notice that it fills in a GET request, which is a way of saying I want to grab some information from this uh, application. And when I run it, it comes back and it gives me the, the results that I expect. Perfect. Now the next step after I've tested this is I could go here, right click on it, and then do a deploy. And this will deploy it into the AWS console. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, once it's been deployed, I can go back to AWS and you can see that it's now been in this location. And the, the key things to point out here uh, are that notice that it sets up this API gateway trigger. 
I also can look at my source code if I want to by selecting this icon and I could edit it and change it if I needed to. But in general, the, the main thing to look at is this API gateway. And if I scroll down and if I select this API endpoint, it'll serve out my HTML request. So let's go ahead and try it out. There we go. Hello, website Lambda. So in a nutshell, the, the key uh, component of building this is this Lambda interface and the fact that I can hook it up into an API gateway. I could later add different triggers as well or leave this trigger alone, but this is a, a key capability of modern cloud computing.